Today I'm going to be taking a look at a watch from the brand Islander, which is based off the Long Island Watches website. Uh, just to kind of like heads up, I was originally sent maybe about a year and a half, two years ago, a model to review, but the video accidentally got deleted when I was editing it, so I never got to review the model. Uh, so although this model wasn't sent to me, I have had good experiences with them in the past, but all the opinions are still my own, and let's get into the video. So we have a diameter of 41 millimeters. Without the bezel, we're looking at closer to 40 and a half. Lug to lug is 47, height is 12.8, and we have a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications for this watch, we're gonna have the Miyota 9015 beating away in here, closed case back. Uh, we do have 200 meters of state of water resistance with a nice screw down crown. We also have a flat sapphire crystal with an AR coating on it. They don't state whether the coating is outside or inside, so I'm just gonna assume it's inside coated. We do have BGW9 loom for all the indices in the hands here. And last but not least, the watch retails directly from Long Island Watches for $429. So starting off with the dial here, and I think this is undoubtedly the star of the show, a lot of these Northport models have this two-tone ombre style dial effect, and it is really cool. You have, of course, this blue that fades and fades until it becomes white, and especially with this colorway, you have the blue on the bezel matching all the way through to the white of the bezel at the bottom, and it just perfectly harmonizes with the dial itself. It's a very cohesive color tone. It just looks really nice and to me is very pleasing to the eye, very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, and I don't really think they could have done much more to this watch to make it you know, look good. If I, for a quick second, bring in the purple version that I have, you can tell that the dial goes from purple to black at the bottom. And interestingly, they only did purple on the first 15 minutes of the bezel here. I would have much preferred if they stuck with that half bezel purple, half bezel black to fit in with the dials like they did here, but you know, to each their own. The dial is very classic, very clean. It doesn't uh, break the mold too much from the Seiko 62 Moss. It has these very rectangular markers, a little bit of a larger one at 12, the regular baton hands, and it is just a classic dive watch, very Seiko-esque layout. I like that they kept the text very minimal here, just the Islander logo and Islander at the 12, automatic 20 meters, and then Miyota 9015 at the very, very bottom. That to me is maybe a little bit unnecessarily, but it does frame the date window fairly nicely there, so not too much complaint. And something we'll notice once we zoom in a little closer is I just do love how three-dimensional the dial texture is on this. I would argue this is probably one of the best dial textures I've seen probably under a thousand dollars. It is just a really cool texture. It has a lot of dimensionality. Uh, the blending of the color tones is done very well. And especially when you go to the darker color dials like this purple one here, when you have it at certain angles, it almost seems untextured. And then as you move it, it becomes a textured dial. The ridges become a lot more defined. The color tone uh, pops out a lot more. And it is just a very dynamic, interesting dial texture. So looking at the dial here a little bit closer, we do see how interesting this pattern is. To me, it feels like a very, I guess you can say naturally occurring pattern. It doesn't feel too geometric. It doesn't feel too uh, predictable. It does just have a really nice feel about it. It doesn't feel too manufactured to me. And I think, again, comes across very premium. Looking at the way some of the text is done, you can see instead of like very highly printed text with very thick uh, application, it is almost like a little bit on a platform that is then printed on. Not a bad way to do it either. To me, that's almost indistinguishable from the wrist. And to be fair, it probably gives it a little bit more three dimensionality, which does help it just look a little bit more interesting, a little bit more set apart from the dial surface itself. Looking at the indices themselves, we can see very specifically the loom is actually done very well. It's printed very finely. Uh, there isn't any missing splotches or anything like that. And although there is a lot of white tones on the dial, the loom doesn't match perfectly. Loom signatures really never do with other white elements on the dial, but it doesn't look too starkly contrasting. And in direct light, to me, it looks pretty fine. One thing I will say is the indices are very interestingly done. To me, they seem polished, but when you look a little bit closer, they have this almost kind of gently brushed effect. So they really do shine like they're fully polished and they do match with the handset. And the handset, if we look, is completely fully high polished. But the markers themselves have this very interesting, almost gentle brushing about them. I really don't know how else to describe it. Maybe it has a little bit of a blasted texture to it. It is a very interesting marker style that I haven't really seen before. It might just be the, you know, quote unquote quality of the metal itself. But to me, it doesn't seem badly finished or uh, sloppily finished or anything like that. It just has a, I guess, finish I haven't come across. 
there aren't any huge QC issues, there aren't any marks in the markers, there aren't any huge uh, dust or debris on the marker surfaces themselves, any uh, kind of mess up in finishing at all. So it does look pretty nice and well put together. Looking at the date window, it has that same pattern to it, that kind of polished, almost not polished, blasted type metal look to it. And then the date window itself has this very interesting, almost kind of frosted appearance to it. I really don't know what to call it, and I honestly don't think I've seen a date window like that before. Clearly, it's a little bit more customized, not quite as off the shelf as it could have been, which is nice to see. They definitely took the extra step to make it, in their opinion, blend more with the design. Looking at the handset itself, it's actually very clean. I don't really see any QC issues. The hands are well polished. They have a beautiful shape to them. The loom fill, just like the markers themselves, are done very nicely. So value for money, you're really getting a lot out of this watch. For under $500, you're getting an amazing dial texture, some very fun color patterns, some QC, which in my opinion is some of the best I've seen in probably a very long time. And you know, to be fair, this may be specific to my model. Yours might have very small QC issues, but if any of them are even 90 to 85% as good as this, from wrist view, you'll never notice anything and it looks pretty well done. So moving on to the case of this watch, and this is just very classic Seiko 62 Moss case. It's fairly short. It does really have a nice slim mid case with a thicker case back and a thicker bezel, but that helps to just wear it very slimly on the wrist and a lot slimmer than you would expect for you know the quote unquote dive watch specifications that it has. The finishing here is also done pretty well. We do see we have this horizontal brushing which has some high polish on top and on bottom. The more of a top chamfer bottom like entire portion, interesting move. But to me, it kind of serves to visually thin out the mid case a little bit and just give you a softer edge for your wrist to lay against. So it is just more comfortable. We of course have drilled lug holes, which is awesome to see. Signed uh, Islander logo there. From the case top, we do have circular brushing along all the lugs. It looks pretty good. At some angles and some like lighting situations, the brushing can look like a little bit almost too defined in a way. I would like to see a little bit of a finer grain of brushing use, but it is a sports watch. It is supposed to feel a little bit more rough and tumble, and maybe not the most perfectly refined, you know, dress watch esque finishing that we've ever seen. But as it stands, you know, the high polish accents do stand out a lot, and the Jubilee bracelet, although fully brushed, does add a little bit of bling to the watch. What really steals the show here, in my opinion, is this sapphire inserted bezel here. Of course, you have the dual colors that is split perfectly. The color saturation is really great. And the color tone match to the dial specifically is really awesome. But I just love all these little details. The contrast of the black numerals and pips against the colors on this bezel pop out really nicely. Whereas if you go to the purple model, of course, they have white, which just pops pretty nicely. The bezel is also loom, so it does have a nice glow to it. And again, I think stylistically, they hit a lot of home run points with this watch. You do also have a really high polished edge along the bezel, so it does draw your eye in a little bit. And interestingly enough, we have this little bit of like a chamfer here on the edge of the crystal itself. So it kind of draws your eye into the edge of the bezel, and then your eye follows to the crystal, and then naturally to the dial, because the dial is just so well, so interestingly done. And although we're talking about the case, one thing I do really like about the dial that I didn't mention earlier is that they put the seconds track in the, the chapter ring here. So they decluttered the dial, they didn't really ruin the dial texture or try to uh, take any attention away from it in any sense. And the way the watch is shaped, the way the chapter ring is integrated in, when you have the watch dead on, it gives you a very nice feeling of depth leading down into the dial. The color of the white matches perfectly with the, all the other tones on the dial as well, and it just is, I think, a very nice execution of a seconds track. So moving on to the bracelet, we do have the classic Jubilee styling here. It has a little bit of flexion to it, very comfortable on wrist. Because it is fully brushed, but it is brushed very finely, you do get a good amount of light play out of it. And it does just, I think, shine a little bit on wrist and look interesting. Moving into the clasp here, we have a fold over uh, flip lock clasp does have a nice little snick and snack to it. It feels very sturdy. It isn't the most premium feeling clasp or anything like that, but at the end of the day, this is a, you know, under $500 watch. So it's definitely forgivable in the clasp area. We do have seven holes of micro adjust here. So plenty of micro adjust. The links are also fairly small, so you can get a really good fit in there. Just to note, I had to take out everything, but I believe I can take out two extra links here. 
and then I can go two extra holes in. So I have a six and a half inch wrist. If you have probably a five inch wrist, this bracelet might be too small for you. Uh, but just keep that in mind. It, it can't fit the smallest of wrist, even though visually it probably still would look good. And then just before we move on, uh, one, the screw down crown does have a very nice feeling to it. It does screw in, screw out pretty easily. And the bezel itself has a pretty good clicky, feedbacky feel to it. It feels very smooth. Um, it doesn't feel like you would accidentally push it either, and there's not a lot of back play. There really is no back play on the bezel. So it is a very nice feeling. You actually have to give it a little bit of force to actually turn it, but not too much. It is just a pretty nice bezel that has a good clicky sound to it, and of course looks beautiful because of the sapphire inlay there. So moving on to how this watch wears, earlier I was wearing the other purple version. So I mean, to be fair, this is how the watch will look on the wrist. And just like as a quick comparison, of course, because you have that darker dial, uh, the texture kind of pops in and out, and it just is a little bit more of a dynamic feeling watch, I think. Whereas this one, the texture is pretty much on 24 seven. And you do get a small amount of color shift, but not as dramatically as you do with the darker dial here. Then one really quick thing is I have had this North Port for like, let's say maybe, a year give or take maybe a little less than that and it's nice to see that in new iterations they are improving upon it like if you look at the case back of this new one it is very much like almost 3d engraved in very nicely executed a little bit of blasting there at the bottom and just a very, pretty nice looking case back for an otherwise fairly sporty watch whereas you look at my older case back you can tell that it's a lot less defined it's a little bit more basic which you know, is very much serviceable, but they really went the extra mile with this case back, a little bit more polishing, a little bit more detail, a little bit more three-dimensionality. And these are small improvements that they really don't have to make and they are keeping the price the same. So uh, the fact that they keep uh, evolving on the design is really nice to see. So here we have the watch sitting in my six and a half inch wrist and I think it fits perfectly. The lug to lug isn't too long. The watch sits pretty close to the wrist so it doesn't really rise up at all. The bottom of the lugs is very nicely curved so there isn't really any uh, sharp edges or uncomfortability with the case itself. The Jubilee bracelet has very thin links that have a lot of space in between them so you don't get overly hot wearing the bracelet. Uh, it gets a pretty nice fit, it conforms pretty well. So there is just a lot of factors, especially the taper of this bracelet that just make this feel really comfortable on wrist, a nice wearing experience, and probably one of the more comfortable dive watches that I've tried on. Looking at it from the side there, again, even though it is a classic dive watch, it's around 12 and a half millimeters or so, it does just wear very thin to the wrist. The mid case feels deceivingly thin. So it is just a really good watch on wrist, much better than I expected it to be when I originally ordered the purple. I was really just gonna like review it and then pass it on, but I really liked the wearing experience and I just never got to reviewing it. So here we are with the blue one. This absolutely could be a really cool addition if you already like the 62 Moss case. To be fair, of course, it's not any original take on the case, but the dial itself is a little bit more interesting and uh, classy than you, you typically see out of Seiko. So we got some other straps. First, we have this nice cheap uh, kind of suede strap from Cheapest NATO Straps, this little brownish color. I think just works well with the general tones on the watch. Actually brings out that kind of slightly brownish green leaning tint to the loom. To be fair, it looks pure white on other models, like let's say this uh, more purple dial. The loom looks a lot whiter, even though it's the same application. It's just the fact that you have more pure or white tones on the dial that makes it not lean as white for the loom. Not too bad, of course, a little bit dressy for a diver, but I don't mind it and I think it looks pretty cool. Next we have this NATO from Crown and Buckle or you know Chevron strap from Crown and Buckle, this little tweed style, this gray tone. I think it works well with the watch and because it wears thinly, a NATO doesn't add too much bulk to it. You can see basically doesn't really add any height to it at all, still wears very close to the wrist. Not too bad, conforms pretty well. And if the bracelet feels like it wears a little bit too long, this more NATO style strap will help it conform, really stick on the wrist and plan itself very nicely. For a little bit more sporty of a NATO option, here we have a silicone NATO from Amazon. I think the color tone works perfectly, that coolish gray. Uh, again, this one's very thin, so it really adds no height at all. And it is just a very comfortable, obviously water compatible option uh, in case you just wanna take this to the beach or whatnot. Really comfortable, just like the previous strap, plants it very well on the wrist. Uh, and I just think it's a pretty good combo. Uh, in person, I think it looks a little bit better than maybe it does on camera, 
but uh, <laughs> you'll just have to trust me with this one. And lastly, we have the white archer silicone strap, clearly made for this watch. To be fair, I believe there's also an actual rubber strap that Long Island Watches makes that's around 40-ish dollars. And to be fair, I'd probably go with that one. I just don't have it at the moment, and it's a little bit sportier than this is. Uh, but because this is an actual rubber, this kind of does fade to like a yellowish over time. So keep that in mind. Spend $40 and have a more pure white rubber strap or spend $12 and make it you know yellow over time and have to spend another $12. Perfect combo. Obviously matches really nicely with the color tones on the watch. Very comfortable. Plants it well just like the NATOs did. As you can see, again, on my 6.5 inch wrist, there's still a lot of straps shining off the edges. It's nowhere near too big for my wrist, even if I move it up to where I have closer to a regular six inch wrist, you still have a little bit of space there. It does still fit well. You can probably easily go to a five and a half inch wrist. Fantastic dial, fantastic colors. They're really poppy, they're really vibrant, they're very bright. Um, and it is just a really fun watch. And I think at the price point, it's very well specced and just well executed. So take a look at the loom here. You can see there is loom pretty much everywhere. You have loom in the bezel to where you can actually read the markings on the bezel, which is fairly nice. Um, so you can actually time something in the dark if you so choose. You have uh, loom on all the markers, the hands, and even the seconds hand. So this watch is very readable when loomed up, but to be fair, it isn't the strongest glow. I think that's probably one of the weakest points about the watch or the weakest aspects of the watch design is the loom could be a little bit better, a little bit stronger, a little bit more application of loom. So although it is very visible and very strong at first, it doesn't last forever and it does take a fair amount to charge it. So it is what it is. It's not bad. It's not perfect. Uh, and at the price, I think it's serviceable. Relooming comparing to the Timex here, you can see, at least to my eyes, especially in person, they have a similar brightness to them. So very similar glow, very similar legibility. Um, and to be fair, again, the Islander Loom is pretty good while it is the strongest, while it is fresh in a sense. And again, it is just very readable. So it's a decent application of Loom, but I think in further model generations, I would like to see them refine that a little bit add a couple more layers or whatnot, even if that ups the price a little bit, I think that would be worth it. So pros and cons of this watch, and I think a big pro right out of the gate is just the fit and the size of it. It is, you know, a very classic feeling 40 millimeter diver. It does fit very short lug to lug. It does conform very well to the wrist and the Jubilee bracelet on this model in particular helps it feel very comfortable bracelet wise. It's not very sharp. Uh, it does conform very well. They're very thin links. There's a lot of micro adjust in the clasp itself. So you do get a really good comfortable fit and it feels relatively balanced. There really aren't any complaints I can give about the wearing experience. And this is a great sized and uh, just in general designed watch case. One of the biggest pros for the watches, I think, is just gonna be the dials. The texture of this kind of water motif is just beautifully done. It's very three-dimensional. It has a lot of depth to it. And to me, it just is really well executed uh, to a point where I really didn't expect to see something this nice on a watch at this price. Seiko does some fairly good dials at this price too, but sometimes they're a little bit one-dimensional if, or if they have depth to the actual pattern, they're a little bit plain or a little bit small. With this, you get so much depth, so much uh, interest, especially with that like ombre type effect, that this gives, I think, any other texture I've seen at this price point, and a little bit above as well, a run for its money. Another big pro, I think, for this watch, and I guess this series of watch in general, the Northport line, is the color combination and the breadth of color. You can get a very simple kind of blackish purplish one. You can get this crazy orange. You can get the model that I showed here with the blue and white, which is very classic. There's a lot of colors to choose from and you can most likely find one that appeals to you. And they all seem to be executed very well. And lastly, I think the price on this watch is just good for what you're getting, the movement, the execution, the fit, the finish. All that for under $500 is, I think, very good value. And I think, uh, there aren't a lot of direct competitors for this watch. So moving on to cons, and one of my bigger cons would be the fact that I think the loom is a little on the weak side. They could have added more applications, more layers, and I just think if you're going through all the trouble of having such a readable uh, watch when it is loomed up, all the indices, the hands, the seconds hand, the bezel, you might as well just go all out and make it a loom monster in a sense. I mean, to be fair, I've never really used loom in my, my watch collecting journey, but it is a nice feature to have, and again, if you're doing it, might as well do it to the max. My second con would be that you could definitely see it when I compared the purple dial that I have to the bluish white dial of this one, that some of the lighter dials, in my opinion, have a little less depth to them. There obviously isn't as much changingness to the colors on the dial. The 
texture is a little bit more, you know, one dimensional in a sense. It doesn't appear and disappear like it does on the darker dials, which I think is a really cool aspect of it. Darker dials seem to have a little bit more mystery to me, which is cool. And then one con that I think you could just attribute to the Northport range in general is there's like an inconsistency in bezels that some bezels are half color, half color. Some are colored for 15 minutes and then the rest is another color. I think it would have made more sense to just make them all half color, half color, and that would have just blended more with the ombre effect on the dial. And to me, it would have looked perfect on every color combination. It was, it's very odd that some of them decided to do the 15, you know, 30 minute marker you know, shading situation. Uh, don't know what the inspiration was behind that or why that design choice was made, but you know, teach their own. And there even are some models like the orange that just came out, which is fully one color, which that one makes more sense because the dial is fully one color, but it also could have been cool to see like maybe full orange dial, full white bezel. I don't know. So final thoughts on this watch and realistically, I liked it a lot more, like a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, I originally ordered the purple one, I don't even know, maybe a year ago. Uh, and I was just planning on reviewing it, getting it out of the way and then moving it on. But uh, I got the watch in person, I was very taken aback by how cool the dial was, how well it was finished for the price point, how well the dial was done for the price point, uh, and the uniqueness of seeing a sapphire bezel at this price point, it's not super common. So all that put together made me actually make the purple watch something that is just in my standard collection, something I'm keeping. And so much so that I forgot to review it, you know, I didn't do the review on the watch. And it kind of took me until this new version that came out to see one if it in my opinion, was better than the purple and two to finally review the watch. Digressing a little bit, again, I do think this Northport range in general is very interesting. Value for money wise, you're getting a lot for your dollar. Uh, sure, it's not really that original. It is not a design made by Islander. It's not unique, it's not original, but sometimes it's not about who did it first, it's who does it best. And arguably, I think these Islander watches are better executed than some of the 62 Moss Seikos and those are usually more expensive as well. If you like the look of any of the color combinations, I would wholeheartedly recommend it. This is one of those few watches where I'm like, yes, this is fantastic, it's great. Um, and it doesn't feel like any corners were necessarily cut, except maybe outside the loom. I would say in my personal opinion, this is probably one of the best watches and watch ranges that the Islander brand has come out with. I reviewed their kind of more, uh, Seiko SKX style cases and I didn't like that as much in person. There were a few quirks and whatnot that I think could have been improved upon there. And although it was still cool for the price point, this watch offers much better value and a much more refined product. This watch in a sense gets my stamp of approval. It has made it into what I consider probably part of my permanent collection. So take that for what it's worth. Anyway, those are just my opinions. Thank you as always for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in another one.